So, what a location! Behind me is the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque, both marking the place where the Jewish Temple used to be. Down here in the valley is the Pool of Siloam. And above us, over here, a large-scale Catholic church with a rooster over its top, and it is said to be the Church of Petus in Gallicanto, the site where Peter denied Jesus. Shalom everyone, welcome to another vlog by Danny the Digger and this time I'm in a quest after the site where Jesus was interrogated by the high priest after captured at Gethsemane. Let's go! So this nice quiet site on the uh, eastern slopes of Mount Zion holds today one of the nicest churches in the Holy Land and definitely in Jerusalem, the Church of Petrus in Gallicanto. Let's go up to the top floor, although the archaeology and the interesting stuff is again downstairs. Okay, some archaeology over here, column bases, who knows from which period in which context, but attesting to the fact that also in ancient times there were some remarkable buildings uh, commemorating perhaps Christian traditions. And today this big church has here, let me zoom in to show this. I hope the camera can capture this. A person tied up from above, and beneath it reads, On ma mie en fosse profonde. My French isn't that great, but it's meant to say, A friend in a deep ditch. Yes, because this is the site that claims to be where Jesus was interrogated by the high priest and then he was jailed before handed over to Pilatus for trial. But, as you know me, I'm asking what does archaeology tell us of all of this? What can we see that can validate this tradition? Well, only one way to find out. Let's go in. Here's another nice mosaic wall presenting the topic. This atrege se kaifa. Yes, I assume it's referring to the denial of Peter. The denial of Peter. The denial of Peter is an interesting topic. It is uh, first recorded in the Galilee when Peter argues to be his favorite disciple and Jesus says, no, no, you will deny me one day. You will deny me three times. And this prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus is captured Peter tries to get close to where he is arrested, but when people suspect that he is one of his followers, maybe because he had a distinguished Aramaic Galilean dialect, he denies him three times and then the rooster crawls, calls, not like the crow we just heard now. And Peter realizes Jesus was right, Jesus' prophecy is indeed fulfilled. But what does archaeology tell us about this site? Well, at the entrance you have your nice mosaic floor dating to the Byzantine period. Byzantine is in general a period of Christianity building sites to commemorate holy events from the time of Jesus, except that this mosaic floor has a figure in the middle whose image was vandalized, but on either side it reads Ge. Ge means Gaia, Earth. So it's actually a personification of uh, a figure representing Earth. Not a very Christian symbol. And to this day, I've not heard a satisfying explanation to this uh, imagery in this site, in this context. Moving down, you have here another element of this Byzantine church that was uncovered probably in the 1930s 
or the earliest evidence, I think this was actually uncovered in the 1990s, but it was the 1930s that the current church that we're walking through was completed, although it was very nicely renovated in the turn of the 21st century. The site today is sadly all like abandoned. I'm filming in the midst of the pandemic. There's actually no one here. No one even charged my uh, parking and entry fee. Uh, on the other hand, it gives you a totally open site to film as much as you want. You're not disturbing anyone and no one is disturbing you. And because this is early January, you, st you still have imagery relating to Christmas here. But it is the images over here which uh, are of interest relating to, in this case, Jesus feeding the multitudes, I believe. And here is the quote of Peter when he's suspected to be a follower of Jesus. Non novi ilum, I do not know him. Fulfilling a prophecy that Jesus said. Okay, but why is it all here? Under us are two more floors that claim, claim to be where Jesus was arrested. Yes, the floor beneath us is believed to be the very mansion of Caiaphas, the high priest that uh, interrogated Jesus with the Sanhedrin. And then, as the Gospel of John tells us, that he was given to trial only the following day, he had to be arrested somewhere. That is what we're going to see right now. So, first of all, as you step into the lower floor, and I'm going to change the camera to get a better imagery of this low light area. Here you have what looks like a house carved in the bedrock. Okay, but switching to the better camera to get the details properly, you can see that it's got these holes both on top and on the sides and archaeologists suggest that this is no house. This is a stable, a place to keep horses. So where is the house of Caiaphas? I do not know. Maybe it's above our heads. But these are stables. Now, it's not proof that this is the house of Caiaphas, but it suggests that it was a house of a man of wealth. And Caiaphas, being the high priest, you would expect him to have a lot of wealth including horses. Aha! What else can we see here that could be related to the home of the high priest and the interrogation of Jesus? Well, one item that is not on display here, but is recorded to have been discovered here in the 1880s, is a stone inscribed Le Hashem Korban, something that relates to sacrifice. And priests, as you know, were in charge of the sacrifices up in the temple. So here's another possible um, connection to the home of the high priest. But now I am in the crypt beneath the congregating area that I showed you before. That is the shaft leading into it. And there is another one. But using the fact that I'm all alone, Wait, sorry, here we go. Let's go in. Ooh. Not enough light, sorry. Okay. Here we go. This underground cavity all carved in the rock is said to be the very place where Jesus was arrested, was kept on that night between his interrogation 
And when he was handed over to Pilatus, I have to agree with one thing. If I'm in here and I don't have any ladder, there is no way I could get out of here. I mean, this stairway is modern. This is definitely a place where you could lock a person up and it doesn't look like it's a cistern because if you look at the walls, there are no traces of plaster to suggest that this was a cistern. On the other hand, let me see if I can tilt it all the way up. In the shaft, there we go. In the shaft, there are three engraved crosses. And that suggests that already in antiquity, people identified this place as the site where Jesus was locked. So is this the house or the foundations of the house of Caiaphas? Proof I don't have, but you have a few arguments in favor of this assumption. Circumstantial evidence that you could present in court if this was being on trial. Another interesting feature, but I have to admit it left me puzzling when I first noticed it. Indeed proves that Jews lived here because one way of telling a Jewish home is if it has a ritual bath in it. And it turns out that the so-called prison is actually an addition after a ritual bath was being carved here. You can see the stairway leading into what used to be a ritual bath, even with a division. So the person going down will not touch the person going up, who has already been purified. And this definitely dates to the time of Jesus and to Jewish context. But if so, it means that the big pit, the deep pit beneath it, is possibly from a later period. The question is how later? And that's one thing that cannot be answered. It could have been still from the first century. It could have been converting a mikveh into a little prison. Or it could have been added centuries later. And then it cannot be the site where Jesus was in prison. These are the limits of science. Until we have a time machine, we'll always have a certain reasons to doubt different uh, traditions, but uh, there are some significant arguments in favor of placing uh, the home of Caiaphas over here. I must say that Josephus does not tell us that the priest in general and the high priest live necessarily in the eastern slopes around here. Again, these are the eastern slopes leading down to the biblical part of Jerusalem, the city of David, the Pool of Siloam is down there in the valley. I hope you've watched my review of the Pool of Siloam as a place where Jesus both performed the miracle and probably also washed himself before going up to the temple. Josephus and even some Byzantine travelers tell us that the house of Caiaphas is actually on the upper city. The upper city, hold on, let me move to this edge. The upper city should be up there. Okay, not on the eastern slopes. But until we find an inscription telling us, you know, this is the house of Caiaphas or someone else, you can't really reach any conclusion either way. One thing is certain, there's a, is certain, there's a lot of quarrying activity done here, which is possibly, probably, foundations for, um, for houses that were built on these slopes as well. And there were definitely Jews, because for instance, here you have another ritual bath carved into the rock. So is this the house of Caiaphas? Is this beautiful Catholic church marking that site? There is a good possibility there are arguments in favor of it, but also arguments against. On the other hand, this site also proved to yield very interesting 
stepped street that apparently connected the upper city with the pool of Siloam. Here is part of it and let me tilt the camera to show you all of it going up, up, up there. Now, as the images up there suggest, this path was used by Jesus and not once but twice. If the Last Supper took place on Mount Zion, another subject I reviewed in one of the previous chapters, and we know that after the Last Supper they go to Gethsemane behind the tree, then they may have walked down here. They may have walked on this very uh, stepped street to get to Gethsemane. And since they didn't stay there for too long as Jesus was captured and taken by the high priest, maybe he was again walked uh, by force this time up the street to the house of the high priest to be interrogated. What an interesting possibility. Now, what does archaeology show us? Here we have a plain mosaic floor but with a beautiful inscription in Byzantine Greek. Curios Fulak set an sodon su ten exodon su. Bless when you enter and bless when you leave. This is part of a church that is dated to the 7th century. But the question is, was it relating, was it attributing itself to the home of Caiaphas then as well? Today, the site definitely claims to relate to it. And here is a beautiful, yet unfortunately in the shade right now, a sculpture presenting the name of the church. Here is Peter saying to this woman, Non nobilum, I do not know him. <laughs> and you could suggest that the incentive to speak like this is because of the guard standing in the back. But saying this three times, the rooster calls. Fulfilling another prophecy by Jesus. What a nice expressive sculpture. Okay, I only wish it wouldn't be in the shade like this. Okay, so this is the essence of the site and what it presents archaeologically. Here is now the image showing Jesus going down after the Last Supper, perhaps down this very paved road. And then the image in the back here is already showing us his forced return by the slaves of the priests, dragging him back into the city to be interrogated, as the text tells us. Ready? Here we go. Now, in addition to all of this very detailed presentation, uh, the site also has a very good educational tool added uh, less than 20 years ago that is really great for the study of Jerusalem in the Byzantine period. When I used to teach at the Hebrew University, I mean, I still teach, except that there are no overseas students. But when I gave classes to those overseas students, it always included also a visit to that model, because the model presents a very detailed account, or suggested account, of Jerusalem in the Byzantine period. If you've been following my series, you've probably seen the 1 to 50 scale model of Jerusalem in the time of Jesus, in the first century. But follow me now for the Byzantine period model of Jerusalem. Okay, 
first of all, here we have a map. Wait, I'll zoom out a bit. No, <laughs> I'll zoom in. I'll zoom out with the phone. Here is a map showing Jerusalem, but in the Byzantine period, when the Jewish temple is now in ruins, and the center of the city is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But both I hear that there's wind distraction, and let's hope that at the model it will be unwindy enough so I can unwind <laughs> and present this properly. Here we go. Okay. Imagine yourself uh, a crow flying over Jerusalem in the 5th century and the temple, the focal point of Jerusalem, the place that Jesus visited, this glorious edifice, is standing in ruins. We don't know what happened here in the Roman period. Some suggest that the 10th legion was stationed here. Abru tells us that there were images of the emperors sculptures presented here but nothing else and it was left in ruins also in the following Christian Byzantine period because it was fulfilling the prophecy of Jesus it was fulfilling Jesus words saying that the temple will be destroyed one day and by leaving it in its destruction from a Christian point of view it is showing that Judaism or the Judaism of animal sacrifice in the temple is irrelevant Jesus has replaced, and the sacrifice of Jesus has replaced the animal sacrifice. Okay? Now, where is the city center now? The religious center is now the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The site that locates, that commemorates both the place of the crucifixion as well as the burial. But before we reach that site, let's walk across here. And we can see now the pools of Betchista. The pools of Betchista in the Byzantine stage when a giant church was built over the dike in the middle to commemorate the healing of the sick person. John chapter 5, I believe. And it's interesting to note this because in the following crusader times, the crusaders will diminish this subject and will emphasize something that they practically invented the birthplace of Mary, arguing that Mary lived in the pools of Betrista and they will make a giant Romanesque style church next to it, which is standing to this day. I hope you follow that chapter, reviewing the pools of Betrista in detail. Moving on to the northern end of the city, we are actually flying over today's city walls more or less. We believe that today's city walls are following the lines is established by the Romans and continued in Byzantine times and it was the Romans who made at the northern end a big plaza and the two main streets coming out of it what's called the Cardo and the secondary Cardo and uh, in the plaza inside the, uh, the the main gate what's known today as Damascus gate they had a giant column a giant column which is long gone, but the Arabic name of Damascus Gate is Bab el Amud, the Gate of the Pillar. So in the Arabic there's still a memory of its existence, whose, whose existence was proven in the discovery of this amazing map in today's Jordan city called Madaba. The Madaba map is also what this model is heavily based on. The Madaba map, among others, indeed depicts a giant column inside Damascus Gate. Uh, perhaps in Roman times it had again a sculpture of a king and perhaps in the Byzantine period it still stood and had the sculpture well of Jesus but it's all assumptions we don't have proper historical record of this you can also see here let me get the camera as close as I can a triumphal arch this triumphal arch is called today Eke Homo believed to be the place where Jesus was presented by Pilatus uh, um, and, and then sent for crucifixion. And behind it, 
is the site identified with the Antonia, the site of the uh, trial of Jesus. The trial of Jesus was taking place really in the Praetorium, but there's a big question of where exactly is it. <clears throat> anyway, this is now the focal point of the city, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The big round structure is around, is built over the tomb of Jesus. There, next to it, is the presentation of the Golgotha, and a giant basilica-shaped church connected it with the main street, with the Cardo Maximus, which was a 22 meter wide avenue at the time that was designed to enable processions, and especially processions between the church and Mount Zion. So indeed, let's move on to Mount Zion. I hope you can hear me well because the Muslims just started calling for prayer and it's Muazin's yelling to a, a reminder for the third prayer of the day from all over the city. I hope the mic is catching enough of me and less of that. Here is the area of today's Jaffa Gate. Here is where Herod's palace used to be. In the Byzantine period there was nothing of importance there. And on Mount Zion is the mother of all churches, they call it. Hagia Zion. The, the Holy Zion Church, the site that was said to be built over where the first uh, community of the early Christians congregated. And this is interesting. The model is also showing where we are right now, Petrus in Gallicanto, which is uh, suggesting that already in the Byzantine period they worshipped the place where Jesus was interrogated here. I must say it's a possibility, but the sources don't really say it, not as far as I know. And it's also showing the mistake made by the Byzantine Christians, suggesting that the Pool of Siloam is like on, along the ascent going up to the temple. Why am I saying that's a mistake? Watch my, watch my vlog about the Pool of Siloam, and you'll see that we now know that the real Pool of Siloam in the days of Jesus was further down. Now, there's one giant church over here, which is a bit peculiar, especially because there are no mentioning in the New Testament of any significant event somewhere around the parking lot of the Jewish quarter of today. So what is this church? This is a church mentioned in the 6th century sources as the Nia church, the new church, built by Justinian and reflecting a very interesting moment in the Byzantine period when the emperor ran out of holy places. <laughs> Justinian was eager to build another church, but there were no more holy places to mark in Jerusalem, so he made a new church, and he made up uh, sacred events over it. Maybe that should be reviewed in another chapter by itself. Anyway, enough for now. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Of course, hit subscribe and like to make sure you get notifications of my next chapters, and I hope the tourists will come soon as I'm would like to make an income if you wish to support me in the meantime uh, check out the description of this video where you can give a little contribution via PayPal so thank you all and God bless you and Shalom from Jerusalem